today we'll be adding some cool modifications to this Imperial Light Cruiser that's here right now. We should start on right now. So yeah, again, here's the very first modification you could add to it. It's not much, but I really like it for both display and just holding around in general. But the first thing you can notice over here is actually the fire area, as if one of the micro TIE fighters has been shot down. I actually really like this area. But something you have to realize before that is this, this little area. First thing you can obviously tell is that it's shooting out lasers, which, yeah, it's not that hard to decrypt. All you need for these missiles are just the flick fire missiles that are found in literally any basic Star Wars set and apply them onto these side cannons that are on the side wedges. I used both red and green, but you could use whatever color you're choosing. Now once done with that, to get the TIE fighter flying effect, all you have to do really is get the micro, one of the micro TIE fighters it comes with and get one of these clip-on pieces. It's really not that hard. Just to get one of these clip-ons, clip it onto this wing, and then you clip it onto the flick fire missile right there. You could aim the cannons up or down, depending where you want it to fly. But at this point, I just want it to fly sideways like this. Now for the Millennium Falcon, it's not that hard. You just build a custom miniature one, which I did do at one point that I stole. This just from the custom little mock I made. And then you'll need one of these pieces, and you apply it at the bottom. And then you stab it through right here. And then it'll say fairly well. And then you can make it look as if the TIE Fighter is chasing the Millennium Falcon. One of the first things you need to get is one of these. Just apply it wherever. And then to build the inside the wing effect, just grab one of these pieces and apply some flame colored stuff, such as I put red and or orange. And then you get one of these pieces and get one of the TIE Fighter wings. And then you apply it on a corner, not in the center, but in, on a corner. And then you slip it through right there. And you stab it through that middle of that little fiery area to give the effect that it's broken. Then what you do with the other part is you detach the other wing and apply the, the body of the TIE Fighter onto the wing and apply it onto the corner of the wing. And then you get one of these pieces and put another flame colored looking area on, like I put yellow. Then you stab it through right there, I would say. One of these stab through areas. Here, I'll put it through this one. And then what you do is you stab it through, you just apply it onto a stud. So generally, it is not really that hard, but sometimes. Like what I'm doing right now is not working, as you can tell, and it, the wing will just fall off at some points. So you have to be generally very precise where you go. See, look like that. And then the rest is pretty straightforward. You just apply flames and some multicolored flame looking studs around the area. And yeah, then you basically have the TIE Fighter burnt area. <laughs> So this next mod is pretty simple, honestly, but it takes some time and work and patience. So what you need for this next one is to make it look display worthy. So what you will need is the Scout Trooper Helmet and the Boba Fett Helmet. You need these two specifically for their stands, or honestly, you could just go on to BrickLink or to the pieces for these stands. But you need these two helmets because they come off the stands the easiest. And what you need to do is just follow every step I do or else it might go wrong. Now one thing you should do for the helmets is pull them off very gently and put them to the side. And you also need to take off the name tag oh, which says your name. You, do, you need to do that with both of the helmets very lightly because they might break especially the Scout Trooper one. But yeah, you should need to take them off very lightly along with the name tags. So. Now what you gotta do is you first things first have to remove all minifigs that are sitting within. If you're a man like me, just put your minifigs inside of like the ship. And that's great, but you should remove them before doing this process. Probably just move them out of your way. Then close that back up gently. Then you flip this over. You, you flip the whole Star Destroyer just over. And it'll probably stand itself up because like the back lid we just opened up will probably position itself pretty well. But what you need to do is grab the Scout Trooper one. 
like pedestal base. You could tell it's a skeletal ruin because it's got the gray up here instead of the black like Boba Fett. You need to remove these pieces. And yeah, even these Technic pieces that are holding it on, you need to remove that. And what you're gonna do, you're probably gonna put the Boba Fett one. You're gonna need to put it right here on the front because it's got four of them around. You keep them on the Boba Fett one. So it'll be more stable in the middle. So you'll put it like right here. And we'll probably end up putting the Scout Trooper one around here. So watch what I'm gonna do and watch very carefully. And of course, once you're done with that, you can just stand this bad boy back up. But make sure to open up this flap and just resecure all pieces inside because I have a little trouble with that. Of course, you guys have noticed these little holes down here where like the display name tags went. Of course, I'm going to put something in here to display all the minifigs instead of just leaving them cooped up inside. If you're making this display worthy, might as well make it look good. So, of course, you'll leave one of these pieces, all right? And then these display stand pieces, well, uh, yeah, you'll need a whole bunch of them. Well, not a whole bunch, but... And honestly, I'm not really sure if this will fit all the figs. I didn't make sure of that, but it does not matter. And you just put them on like so. <laughs> Once we get this down, so where we will display the minifigs, and then we could snap them onto each edge like that, and then that is when you could grab all of your figs and display them. <laughs> Now, of course, there's a few more details, but one thing I did add that I forgot to tell you about is right here. I added this little piece for Baby Yoda so that he'd be even in the middle, so then it would not look weird. So, yeah, but there's a few things on the outside that could use fixing up. But one thing that really bugs me about this is that, is that there's just some details on the whole interior and exterior that really bug me. But one thing that really does bug me are these cannons. I mean, surely they could be different for you, but one thing that you could do is just snap them right off. All right, and the one thing you could do in there to replace that, so if there being just this huge gap here, you could get that piece and this piece. I might need to lift it up though to do it so that it just doesn't break. And then you get one of these pieces, all right? Just slap it down and then look how good that looks. That looks very professional, honestly. Another thing that really bugs me is up here, how there's just like smooth pieces on the sides. So, solution I have, just get a whole bunch of more smooth pieces and just slowly apply them on. Honestly, this will eventually turn out to look really quite amazing if I'm telling the truth. One thing you should do is not just use all light gray up here because there is some dark gray. So use a dark gray piece like that. And then the whole top will end up looking so much better. Like how it would be if it was on display. It's how smooth and nice and just how good it looks in general now. But it didn't seem like something like it would do in like a play set. But since if you're going to put this on display, it looks super good. And here are some other quick things you can add on to the Star Destroyer as well to make it look just better and smoother. Now, once you've done that, I, I feel like it looks really quite amazing. Like seriously, you get like the perfect amount of smooth tile pieces along with just you know not to have pieces i just feel like this looks just like amazing i just like love up here how smooth it is there's like i like it all in general now like with all of this like display stand and everything like that it's like you don't have the cannons on which some of you might like some of you might not like but what you could do quick solution you could just tap them on to the bottom because and like some of the Star Wars movies, you can see they've got like cannons just like this on the bottom of the Star Destroyer. It's like only like these curved sides are open studded, I guess. We could tap them on. And they're really chunky and big, so I wouldn't really do that. But you could, you know. You really, really could do that. 
but I feel like this is just looks flat and amazing. But one more quick thing you could do to make this an Imperial Star Destroyer, like Darth Vader's or something, you just take these parts off, that which we added, or if you just left it, then it naturally is like this, and you grab some of these pieces. Except you can take those out and just, you know, one of these pieces very well found. You could just snap them up right there to make like the basic regular Star Destroyer, except it looks like <laughs> really ridiculous. But you could like snap back on these smooth pieces to make it look better, I guess you could. And yeah, I mean, this looks really ridiculous, but found a way to make it look good good for you one thing i really do recommend adding is getting one of these pieces again which we used for the falcon in a earlier build and then you snap it onto a tie fighter so it's one one of the many tie fighters it comes with except one thing is my fighters are like this so you'll just need to take off the glass window piece snap it on like this so yeah kind of gives you a wacky vibe at first but then it'll end up looking quite amazing all you do is just stick it through right here, or uh, might be right there, and it could just end up look, look, looking like it's flying, and just slip it through, diagonal it down, you know, like, whatever you feel like looks good, right, and then it just looks amazing, or you could slip it through in one of these, so it just looks like it's flying through the sky. Either way, I really recommend doing that. If I'm being completely honest with you guys right now, I feel like this looks absolutely amazing on display. Once you put it on a shelf like this, it looks flat out just amazing. Lost Mod is kind of obvious and stupid, but just pair it up with your other Mandalorian Legos, it'll look great. In fact, I'll even do a commercial on all of them right now. On the peaceful planet of Tatooine, there the Mandalorian was, eating his lunch with the Tusken Raiders, as usual, but then he looks up and sees something. Oh no, Moff Gideon's light cruisers entered the atmosphere! The Mandalorian pulls out a sniper and rushes to a speeder. Mando then, quickly, ever so quickly, zooms by on his speeder bike. No. Then when Mando gets there, he realizes he's almost too late. But then he does a cool kickflip and, and saves the day as always. He does his victory dance. Then another dark trooper comes and gang bashes Mando. He gets super beat up. He goes flying around the world. Then they hear footsteps of an ATST. Then when the dark trooper looks up, he realizes some people that are not from this planet somehow took it over. And then they shot him. And then the dark trooper died. Then Mando gets up, runs over to a ship. Then Moff Gideon's light cruiser somehow blows up. Boy, official Lego sets from Star Wars Mandalorian season three streaming soon. Purchase sets from season one and two while supplies last. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and please don't forget to subscribe. Peace out, y'all.